Hey guys, it's Jenny. Welcome back to Solid Gold. For the past several weeks, I've been doing update videos on the goldfish that I have out in my fish room. And this week, we are going to continue that trend. Most of you guys know that I keep goldfish in my fish room, and most of the goldfish that I keep are butterfly tail telescopes. And every once in a while, I breed my butterfly telescopes and produce babies, and it's super fun and exciting and awesome. And there's always a few that I hold back and keep for myself for future breeding or just because I happen to get particularly attached to them. So in this video, we're gonna look at the four keeper babies that I held back from a group of fish that I spawned almost a year ago now. Before we jump right into that though, I have to give you guys an update on Sophie. Sophie is my big female red and white butterfly telescope. She's a ginormous fish. She's been featured in several of my videos over the past few years because I've had her for three years now. She's about three and a half years old, or at least she was. Sophie did pass away recently. It's really sad. It actually happened a week or two ago and I haven't really talked about it until now because I just I don't I just don't really want to acknowledge that it happened because it's sad and I know it's going to make you guys sad, but it did happen, so here we are. The bad part about fish keeping is that it can be fun and exciting, especially when you're getting new fish, when things are going great with your fish, or they're growing, or they're having babies, everything's fun and great, but there are bad parts to fish keeping too, and really pet keeping of any kind. Because they're living things, they also will pass away and die. It's just part of life. In my video update that I did on the female butterfly telescopes a couple of weeks ago, you guys saw Sophie, and it's actually really strange timing that I happened to do that video at that time because immediately after filming that video and editing it and putting it online, I noticed that her scales were lifted. And this is usually what we refer to as dropsy. It's a retention of liquid inside the fish's body to the point where their scales actually start puffing up, almost like a pine cone. And so I noticed that Sophie, her scales were just ever so slightly lifted, really not bad, and I actually noticed it while I was editing the footage for that update video. I shot the video a few days before I even went and edited the video. So it was like her scales were just barely lifted when I shot the footage. When I actually looked at it on the computer and started editing it, it was a few days after. And when I noticed that the scales were ever so slightly lifted, I went out and looked at her a lot closer out in the fish room. And sure enough, her scales were definitely lifted and um, she had dropsy. There's a lot of misconceptions out there about fish health. One example is anytime a fish is floaty, people just think, oh, feed it peas and it'll get better. It's like a really easy thing to repeat and so people repeat it constantly, but it actually, there really isn't that much benefit to feeding a goldfish peas when it is floaty or at all. Peas are not gonna help a fish that's floaty. I'm getting off on a tangent now and I realize that, but I kinda wanna address this because people were telling me that, oh, I just need to feed Sophie peas and maybe she'll get better. The idea behind feeding a goldfish peas when it's floaty is that it may be constipated, which is causing the floatiness. And the peas may help kind of provide like a laxative effect for the fish and help it stop being constipated. But when a fish is floaty, I, in my experience, and I've been keeping goldfish for many, many years now, in my experience, I've never had a fish be floaty because of constipation. Never, not once. When a goldfish is floaty, in my experience, it's always an issue with the swim bladder. And when they have an issue with the swim bladder, such as maybe it's malformed, it's just not functioning properly, whatever the case may be, that's a structural issue with an organ inside of the fish. It's not gonna be solved by any amount of feeding peas. So I just wanted to clear up that misconception because I see it out there quite a lot. But anyways, that's a tangent. Another thing that people think is that dropsy is always curable and it's always caused by a bacterial infection. Dropsy can be caused by a bacterial infection. It can be kind of a side effect of a fish having an internal bacterial infection. But most of the time, by the time it's bad enough that the fish is reacting with lifted scales, 
also known as dropsy. It's to the point where it's become organ failure. What happens is the kidneys get damaged and they cannot regulate the amount of water that the fish's body retains. So it's it's organ failure. Unfortunately with Sophie, if you guys watched that video, you know that I have already been going back and forth in my own mind about whether euthanizing her is the right thing or not to do because she's had kind of a diminished quality of life for the past, I would say six months to a year. She developed an issue where her peduncle, which is the part of the body that connects the body to the tail, kind of flopped over and just wasn't it wasn't strong enough anymore to support the weight of her tail. And then she would also just sit face down in the tank and just kind of, she would still get around and she looked really healthy. Other than that, she just, she just wasn't a hundred percent. So that combined with her being already three and a half years old, which for a fancy, really modified goldfish, that's a fairly good lifespan actually, caused me to just say, you know what? She has dropsy, I'm not gonna put her through rigorous treatments, trying to get rid of a bacterial infection that may or may not be there because I am pretty much like 99% sure that this is organ failure and no amount of treatment is going to bring her back to the way that she was before. So I did have to opt to humanely euthanize her. I use the clove oil method. It, in my opinion, is one of the only humane ways to do it. And I have a video explaining how to do that that I made a few years ago, but the information in it is still very relevant and accurate. You can check it out. I'll put a link to it right here. So anyways, this video I know is not really about Sophie, but I wanted to give you guys an update on that anyways, because you won't be seeing her in any of my future videos. And it's really sad, but you know, that's just a part of pet keeping, really. On to happier things. I wanted to show you guys the four keeper babies that I have from my batch. Actually, this group of four fish is from two different batches of babies that I had from a spawn that took place almost a year ago today now. There's a little black one in here that's from a spawn with Lana being the mother and either Loki or Mordecai being the one that fertilized the eggs. I don't know because it was kind of a group spawn. This little black one is super cute. I decided to keep this one because I knew that I wanted to keep at least one of the fish from this spawn and there was only really one that I was super interested in keeping. The rest I figured I would sell so that more people other than myself could enjoy them. And I kept this one because I thought it had the best confirmation for what I was looking for. The other three keeper babies in this tank were all from a group spawn with Sophie being the mother of them. And I don't know who the father was because it was kind of just a group spawn that I hadn't even planned. I just had a bunch of red and white butterfly telescopes together in one of my blue Intex pools. So I really don't know who the, who the father of these fish are or there could be like multiple different fathers in the same spawn, I don't really know. Since goldfish reproduce by external fertilization, there could have been multiple males that fertilize the eggs from this one female. I kept a little white fish from this batch because this one reminded me so much of Luca. Luca is my male white butterfly telescope who I've had for about four years now. And since he's getting a little bit up there in age and I've been getting a little bit worried about him, passing away at some point soon, I thought I really would need another white butterfly telescope in my life. And this one was perfect. It's like, it's like a little mini Luca. Thinking back to him when he was just a little guy, this one looks so much like him. And I'm so excited to see how it will continue to grow and just continue to look more and more like Luca every day. Except this one is a female, so not identical, but very, very close. I also kept this little red and white butterfly telescope, and I kept this one because it had the nicest red color in the entire batch of fish, and also with the nicest pattern. It kind of has like this white base with a pretty red saddle looking pattern over its back, and I think it's really cool. And then I kept this yellow one. I can't believe I just said yellow. Yes, I just said yellow. This is a yellow goldfish on accident. <laughs> I've never before seen a yellow butterfly telescope goldfish, but somehow I managed to accidentally breed one. And I'm really excited about it because it's such a distinctive like apricot yellow color and it's so pretty. And I really want to find another fish that I can pair this one with and try to reproduce this yellow color and breed more of them because it's so neat. In addition to the really awesome, interesting, unique color, it also has a really good body shape and a nice tail. So I'm grateful for that. All four of my keeper babies are females, which is a really good thing because as you guys know, I've been 
kind of complaining about it for the past few videos. I kind of have a lack of female butterflies right now, so it's a really good thing that all four of my keepers just happen to be females. A little bit about this aquarium and how I have it set up. This is a 40 gallon breeder aquarium, and I usually say that you can have one goldfish for the first 20 gallons of space, and then for every additional goldfish, you need an additional 10 gallons of space. So usually in a 40 gallon tank, I would recommend that you have only three goldfish. By my own admission, <laughs> I am pushing the rules on this a little bit, but I am a very experienced fish keeping person, fish hobbyist, fish, hmm, goldfish hobbyist. <laughs> These guys are really little, and this is only meant to be a temporary home for them. I do intend on splitting them up and maybe putting two per 40 gallon breeder tank. I just actually purchased two more 40 gallon breeder tanks from the Petco dollar per gallon sale recently, so I will have more space to work with once I actually get those set up and put in my fish room. I really like the 40 gallon breeder style aquariums for goldfish keeping specifically because they have plenty of volume and it's not a super tall tank. Goldfish actually do best in a little more shallow type of aquariums. The problem that I have with them is they're really hard to find good stands for. I found a good solution for this problem at Lowe's of all places. The home improvement store, Lowe's, yeah. <laughs> they have a shelving unit called the Edsall shelving unit. I'll put a link to it down in the description section below. Its dimensions are absolutely perfect for fitting a 40 gallon breeder aquarium, like to the centimeter perfect. It's crazy. It's like they did it on purpose or something. I don't know. So I have two of these setups side by side. On the bottom tank of this particular setup, I have housed in here four other butterfly telescope babies. These ones are siblings to the black one that I'm keeping from the Lana Loki Mordecai spawn and they are going to be available for sale at some point in the future. They're just not quite yet. They've been growing at a slower rate than the other ones in the group, so I'm trying to hold them back and I'm trying to promote growth to get them to the point where I feel comfortable sending them out to people. I wanted to also mention, if you are subscribed to this channel, that's awesome. If you're not, go ahead and subscribe. You're gonna want to. There's gonna be a lot more awesome fish content coming up. In the very near future, I make videos every single week about, mostly about my goldfish, but also about other types of fish and sometimes other types of animals as well. And if you're already subscribed, make sure you click on the little bell icon that's next to the subscribe icon down below this video. That will allow you to be notified every time I make a new video. YouTube has been making these changes for a while now where you don't always see every video that a channel puts out when you're subscribed to that channel. Kind of annoying because if you're subscribed to a channel, it probably means you want to see their videos. So if you hit that little bell button down below, it will allow you to be notified as soon as I make a new video and you can be a part of the Solid Gold Notification Squad. All right guys, thank you for watching another Solid Gold video and until next time, stay gold.